Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to the greatest live broadcast on all of YouTube. Of course, Getting Sketchy <laughs> Live. I'd like to welcome you to this incredible show that we have for you tonight. Uh, first of all, let me tell you what Getting Sketchy is, in case you're brand new. Probably not many of you are brand new, but if you are new, Getting Sketchy is a live broadcast here on YouTube where either myself or my good friend and fellow artist and art teacher Ashley Hurst, who's sitting right over there, tries to create a drawing for you inside of 45 minutes. We have a timer and everything, and tonight I'm really sweating bullets because I don't think I'm going to make it. I don't think there's any way I'm going to make it because I'm using a combination of media that really requires a slower approach. But I'm going to try it tonight, I'm going to give it a shot, and I'm going to need every single second that I have to get this done. Um, but over there at the other table is my good friend and fellow artist, Ashley Hurst. So let's say hello to him. Ashley, how are you doing over there? I'm doing great, Matt. Thanks for asking. I'm glad to uh, watch you sit in the hot seat today and sweat bullets. I sweated a little, a few bullets last week. Had a great time drawing my lonely place, but uh, Matt's <laughs> subject is a little bit happier. I think it's going to be of a popular subject. It already is a popular subject in real life, and it's going to be popular on paper as well. I've been looking at the chat a little bit. Looks like it, the weather in your area is either rainy, snowy, or sunny, and some of you are also in the dark. So it's the planet Earth. <laughs> and that makes sense. And speaking of planet Earth, William Shatner left the planet Earth today. Isn't that crazy? I have no Didn't idea. That happen? I have no idea what you're talking about. I think William Shatner went up in space. Oh, you're kidding me. No, I'm serious. Oh, I'm so happy. 90 years old. I am so happy for him. Are you really? I, I am so happy for him. I, I mean, wonder. He, he pretended all those years. I and wonder now he's if he there. ran into uh, any blue ladies up there. You know? <laughs> or any blue I'm, or green or I'm, spotted ladies. I'm sure he'll have a crazy story to tell when he returns. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, anyway, if you are watching this live, there is a chat box. You can, of course, ask questions during tonight's broadcast or make comments. Uh, they don't have to be about what we're doing tonight. They can be anything art-related, and myself or Ashley will answer those for you or we'll do our best to answer those for you or at least address your comments if mm -hmm. they're relevant, of course. And uh, if you put in all capital letters, that will help Ashley see it a little bit easier amongst all of the other um, comments and questions that go scrolling through. I see somebody's asking if Ashley got new yeah, glasses. Yeah, there's already but some. They're uh, not some, new glasses. No, dude. these are actually, these are my 2017 glasses. So it might look a little <laughs> bit out of style today. I'm, I'm making an eye appointment. I'm going to try to get something a little hipper. But I might be wearing my 2017s for a, for a couple of weeks. I think those glasses look cool. I, thank you. For, appreciate yeah. that. You know, I bought these glasses, and then my daughter went to get some glasses and came back with some to look almost just like it, with like the clear, you know, clear mm -hmm. plastic at the bottom. So then she bought a pair of new balance shoes a few months ago and i went to get some shoes just like monday i think and when i came home they were pretty much the same shoes that my daughter bought so uh great well, minds well, think alike or i guess fathers so and daughters you're, think alike you're sometimes. buying the sh you're buying the, the same shoes i'm wearing them right now they're they're are they they're, i have the men's version to be clear she has like again. the junior version let me see them those are the men's <laughs> version yep yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are. Of course they are. <laughs> They're blue and white. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just messing with you. Um, anyway, what was I going to say here? Oh, um, we're, we do this on uh, on YouTube. It's getting sketchy, so we're creating sketches. They can't see you right now. They're not. Well, they see, can see you. <laughs> I got confused on what buttons to push. Anyway, we do this on YouTube. Getting sketchy. Obviously, we're making sketches. Uh, but after this broadcast, we do a live lesson is what I call them over at the virtual instructor.com. The live lesson is for an hour and we go more in depth. Uh, it's part of our membership program. We create complete pieces of artwork. So the lesson series we're working on right now, I think we're going into lesson seven tonight. I'm creating a charcoal portrait of one of my daughters. It's a larger drawing. It's definitely more refined than what we're going to be doing tonight. Anyway, it's part of our membership program and uh, it includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subjects and media. Weekly live lessons, as I just mentioned, there's weekly critiques, which are part of the Members Minute, and there's also a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. It's really everything you would need to teach, an entire year of visual art, all sequenced for you. Uh, there's lots of stuff to explore over at thevirtualinstructor.com, besides just the membership program. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out, there's a link in the description below if you want to check out the membership program. 
or if you want to check out uh, three of our course videos and ebooks for free, you can do that too. There's a link in the description below to check that stuff out too. Don't do that stuff yet, um, but you can join us uh, for the live lesson after this broadcast if you want to when we're done here. Um, but for right now, we need to go ahead and get into this one. And I'm, I'm really, I'm always nervous before I start drawing live. Um, and tonight I'm really nervous because of the time constraint. So I'm just hoping my hand is not going to be shaking visibly <laughs> when I go into this one. So uh, anything before we get into this one? Um, just some pretty funny comments about William Shatner going to space. Oh, yeah, so I'm sure there let's are. Let's see. Uh, who was it? I think... Uh, <laughs> Sketch Cinevar, I might not have said your name right, but uh, mentioned that maybe we should all wear Planet of the Apes mask for when he returns. I love that. I love that. That would be great. <laughs> that would be hard to coordinate, but that would be hilarious. It would be hard. To, all we need are seven billion Let's, all, get, let's you know, all band together and mess with William Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> mess with a 90-year-old man. That's, yeah, that yeah. seems very, very nice. Um, all right, anyway, let's go ahead and get into this one. All right, so what we're going to be drawing here is right over there. And, um, you know, I have such a hard time, you know, naming animals or animal parts and all that stuff. I mean, this should be easy <laughs> to name what it is, but I don't think it's a cupcake. I think it's actually a chocolate-covered muffin with a strawberry on top. So, you know, see, it's kind of got that muffin-y. Okay. Looks like muffiny stuff at the bottom. I'm I'm not sure what qualifies a muffin. To be, it isn't the icing the only difference. You put icing on a muffin, it's a cupcake. I don't know. I don't know, I, I don't know the rules here, but I would. Where is the line between cupcakes and muffins? I know what's on top. Well, anyway, this is what we're going to be drawing tonight, and um, I have to tell you that this the image the original image is from Pixabay, but. Um, I did cut it out of the scene that was mm -hmm. in, put it against a white background. I manufactured the shadow again in Photoshop, but that's because the shadow is inconsistent with the light source. And the reason why is because um, this was, the photo was obviously taken like inside of a cafe or whatever. And the dominant light that was producing the cast shadow was actually from inside the restaurant. You can kind of see it on the right side. It's kind of a yellowy light. And then uh, obviously this was in front of a window. So the dominant the, the more dominant light source, mm -hmm. there's not really a thing. It only, could only be one dominant light right. source. But anyway, right. mm -hmm. the strongest light source is definitely coming from the window, and that's creating that bluish highlight on the left side. So I put the cast shadow on the right side um, there, but it's manufactured completely in Photoshop. But it's okay for us to use, to draw from. So anyway, we're going to be using markers as an underpainting, and I'll be using Prismacolor Premier alcohol-based uh, markers for the underpainting part of this. And I have grabbed several colors that I plan on using, and I'm gonna go as fast as I can, as I already mentioned before. And then over the top, I'm gonna apply colored pencils. This is absolutely crazy. There is, <laughs> and I'm gonna have 45 minutes to do all this, and I can tell you right now, I really don't think that I'm going to get this done in 45 minutes. The first thing Matt said to me when I got here today was, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> I didn't even know what he was talking about yet. That's because I'm not going to make it. Um, anyway, I've put a couple of cheat marks here with my uh, H-Graphite pencil. This is actually a 3H-Graphite pencil. Um, and I'm working on marker paper, too. I should point that out. Uh, marker paper... Is somewhat translucent, but it, it it's a, a nice smooth surface, and it actually keeps the markers from bleeding. So uh, if you ever use alcohol-based markers, they're going to perform a lot better on marker paper. And surprisingly, you can use colored pencils over the top of that, too, on the marker paper as well. So, um, you know, there's not a lot of tooth here, but you can apply colored pencils. So anyway, I've got a couple of cheat marks here with my 3H pencil just to get an idea of how big or how small I want to keep my cupcake. You can see the size of my hand here. This is not going to be a large drawing because of all the stuff I have to do. So, <sighs> right, I got a question for you. Okay. Um, it's actually a comment and a question, both from Orion Nebula. Okay. First, it's possible that cupcakes have a fluffier base and muffins are heavier. Okay. And now an art-related question. Okay. And uh, can you use any markers, or would you need the alcohol-based markers to work with the colored pencils? Oh, good question. You can use any markers, but the alcohol-based markers are translucent when you apply them. 
the water-based markers are going to be mostly opaque okay. and that makes it really hard to do what I'm doing with the markers and colored pencils. The alcohol-based markers though are translucent as I mentioned so think watercolor. They're still pretty strong but they're definitely more translucent than your regular water-based markers and they come in such a variety of different intensities. Mm -hmm. Like for example this is 10, 20% warm gray. We're going to be using this for the cast shadow behind it and it is just a very, very light gray. You're not going to find anything like this in water-based markers. So, yeah, I would suggest having the, the alcohol-based markers. If you don't have them, um, then you might wait and pick some up at the store and then, and then do this tutorial. Because the last thing I want uh, to happen is you try to combine the, the markers with the colored pencils, and you get frustrated and you never try it and again. And think it's you. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's just the, your tool. Yeah, these alcohol-based markers perform extremely different. Uh, extremely differently than than regular, and I picked out the one with a, the Mard label. Um, it, it perform extremely different than water-based markers, and um, they are expensive, but it, you, sometimes you get what you pay for. And now, I think we've had that discussion about art materials. We did have another question that I had skipped over, and you might want to start. I don't know if you want to answer this one after you start drawing, but it was from I'm going to start friend, drawing, Brent and then I'm going to start art. the timer. Okay, after yeah, start drawing the first. Yeah. Um, Brent does art asks that he's he says he's interested a little bit in the one year art class and can you talk a little bit more about that? Uh, okay, the membership program. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, yeah, I can talk about it a little bit. You know what? I'm gonna start the timer since I'm starting. Okay. Here uh, here we go. 45 minutes, give or take 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, anyway, the membership program includes all of our drawing and painting courses. Um, and the new courses that I'm continually adding to the program. Right now I'm adding a course on oil pastels, and I just released Module 6 from that course today. Uh, the courses all include instructional videos along with ebooks, illustrated ebooks that are step-by-steps, breakdowns of the processes and, and lessons learned in each module. Uh, there's also the weekly live lessons, as I mentioned before, which are more in depth. They're typically what you would think of for, for standard courses that you might see in other places. Uh, but they don't include ebooks, and they're mm -hmm. broadcast live, of course. Um, and you also have access to the vault of all the live lessons we've ever done, which I started broadcasting live back in 2012. So that's a lot of We're recorded almost live to 10 lessons. Almost years of live for, lessons. For so. every week. Um, Mostly every week. There's there are a couple of weeks like you take Christmas. two weeks out of a year, and so you're you're getting close to almost 500 live lessons in there. Yeah. There, wow. Yeah. And 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 um, then there's the weekly critiques. I critique a member submitted artwork each week, and um, that's called the members minute, and uh, that's also part of the program. And I've been doing the members minutes for a long time today. Or the episode that will be released tomorrow is episode. four. 400 or 345 I think mm -hmm. so that's uh, a lot of critiques too and you learn a lot from critiques uh, believe it or not even though it's not your own artwork you learn a lot from watching critiques of other people in fact if you went through and just watched the critiques it would really be you would learn so much about art uh, just watching the critiques it's true all right, so I've loosely sketched out the shape of my cupcake here yeah it was with pretty my, fast uh, 3H pencil. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to define shapes of value, basically. So there are some dark values here where the chocolate is just dripping down. And it kind of looks delicious, but also kind of not delicious. <laughs> uh, looks like that really thick chocolate that's almost like a paste. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just kind of concentrating on the darker shapes that I see here. And I'm going to get those in place, and then I'm going to go back and break down some of the shapes it, of value. It looks that to I me see. like you've exaggerated the perspective a little bit to make it really feel like we're looking down at it. I, your your chocolate well, like lines seem to pinch as they as they run down the cupcake. I like that. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm seeing in the reference yeah. right now. I, don't, I, I, like I mean, that. it might not be totally accurate, but uh, it's kind of what I'm seeing here. It looks like the chocolate part, anyway, is over half the, the cupcake. Yeah. O over half. So if we have a little bit less down here, it's going to be fun. We could bring the strawberry down a little bit further, but I don't think that's necessary. Now, the I'm going to start with a strong highlight over here and just block out a shape for this. And this is really 
just so I can know where to put my marker applications. Mm -hmm. And again, I am going really fast here, guys. I, and I, I could work slower and talk about everything that I'm doing, but this is somewhat of a game here. I've got to work <laughs> against the clock. So here I see another edge where I've got a darker value that's happening right here, a little bit of a, a yellow ochre maybe. And then it gets a little bit lighter right here. So I'm kind of making notes with my pencil as I'm bringing these little shapes down. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I just want to get to adding the color as quickly as possible. There was a question earlier. I think it may have scrolled off. Oh, no, it's still there from Bot Gel. And it was, I think it was still kind of about the types of markers. The question specific was, can you use Sharpies? And I know we haven't started the markers yet, but I would say um, the Sharpies are going to be, I mean, they, there are some light colors with the Sharpies. So it depends on how many, if you have all of the Sharpies, you may have a light gray in there somewhere. Yeah, but it's still not going to translate. It's still not going to be the same as the alcohol-based markers. Okay. Um, the Sharpies are water-based and again they're going to they're going to make really thick solid applications and when you try to go over the top of them with colored pencils they're it's just not going to be the same effect you okay. can use them for sure you can use any medium that you want really i mean you could do this drawing without mar without markers at all you know just work right. with the same shapes that matt's working with and um and the color relationships and just stick with colored pencils it's totally doable all right we're ready for markers here we go all right, so five minutes on a sketch here. Step right, two. So here I see that there, I'm going to start up here with the uh, strawberry. And there's a little bit, there's pink over here. And it transitions to kind of more of a yellow, a yellow orange almost. Well, it's really more of a, a red orange. So I'm just going to mm -hmm. go right across here with the pink. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and bring the pink all the way over about halfway, a little over halfway. And I'm using the broad side of the marker just, just to cover a larger area here in a shorter period of time. Now, Jen mentions that she thought that the Sharpies were actually alcohol-based, and I thought that they were too, just not translucent. Oh, well, maybe that's the case. Yeah. Okay. They, they're still a, color a pretty solid want. application. Yeah, that's ahead. what Sharpies are, that's what's good about them, right, is they're so strong. Well, when you need when you need something to stick, something if really sharpies strong. are alcohol based, that's a new one on me. Mm -hmm. Which it's there's new ones on me every day. Yeah, I've been wrong twice today that um, I can count, and then there's plenty of other times no one's pointed out. I'm sure. <laughs> but I, I I can tell you this: the sharpies aren't going to behave in the same way. Now yeah. this is a little bit more of a yellow orange over here, or red orange, I should say. I don't know why I keep saying yellow orange. And let's see. Now we're going to take a poppy red. That was pale vermilion that I just now, used. Now, Sketch Shinover says, don't forget your white highlight on your strawberry. Oh, Did, I, got, I got plans. Yeah, Matt's got plans for that. It's going to be very exciting. Plans. We just got to get to it. We got to get to those last steps. Okay, this so is hold poppy tight red for those here. white highlights. And I'm going to go flip it over to the pointy side here. Kate says, Matt is going so fast today, getting sketchy ah. at warp speed. Well, I've got to. All right, now I'm going to start <laughs> making some of these little strawberry indentions here. Yeah. And I'm going to use the same marker so, here for this. Oh, I, I can't remember who it was. You know, we were talking about the type of chocolate on there. I think it, they, uh, it's already scrolled off the chat screen. But uh, one, one of our friends said that they thought it was chocolate ganache. Okay. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm, pro I'm probably not. Video H uh, says you should draw a hot Cheeto. A hot Cheeto? Man, I love those red hot Cheetos. They don't even taste like food. You've been, you've been transformed, haven't you? Okay, this yeah, is a little bit else. of crimson red here. This is the darker. Live lessons on the peony, the flower that you drew about, I guess, three live lessons ago. So, yeah, that was, that was a... Um, a real workout in patience, working with those all those layers of colored pencils. I hope it's going really well for you. Carrie right, Google go Sharpies, with. and they are alcohol-based. Okay, well, there you mm -hmm. go. I have been, I've been proved wrong yet again. 
And I I didn't hardly ever use Sharpies. Okay, looks like. Okay, Jen made the comment about the chocolate and said that I did pronounce it correctly. Awesome. I get, uh, what do they say? A, a broken clock is right twice a day. That was once for me. Okay, I'm spending too much time on the strawberry for right now. Just trust me on that one. We'll come back to it. Now we're going to go to the leaves here. <laughs> Fill those in with the green. Kate says just one single hot Cheeto that she thinks she can keep up with that one. You, you're moving at lightning speed right now for everybody. I, I am moving at lightning speed, and I have to because I have this timer. Um, all right, so after this light green, and this was apple green. Look how light and bright these colors are to begin and with compared to our reference. Now I'm going to go with a darker green here. Jazz W says, what is a hot Cheeto? Well, that's the thing. Cheetos are, of course, a crinkly little cheese snack, but they make hot ones. Then they make the really hot ones. They're red instead of sort of an orangish color, and they are fantastic. I don't know if I'm a big fan of the hot Cheetos. I don't think many people are. But again, me and my daughter love them because we love our glasses from 2017 and we love our matching New Balance shoes. Yeah, so I think, we're I both think into actually it. a lot of people do love the hot cheese. The hot ones. What about me? All right. Uh, so this color was dark olive green here. And uh, that's enough for that. Now let's move on to our next color. Uh, next, let's go ahead and put, let's do this. Let's add a little bit of this 20% warm gray. Sketch. Uh, Shinover says that uh, we were talking about being wrong, and they said that they thought they were wrong uh, one time, but it turns out they were mistaken. Hmm. You guys are on fire tonight. That's hilarious. Yep. Well, I was mistaken. <laughs> now, Dorothy asks, um, and this is an art-related question, I have Copic markers Looks the same as what you were using. Are they similar? I think they are. Yes, Copic markers are definitely alcohol-based, and they're wonderful markers. Yeah, they, these are really brands that are in competition against yeah. each other, so definitely get started with those. Okay, let's get crazy here with a little bit of jade green. Where am I going to put this jade green? Hmm. Well, in the highlight, of course. That's getting crazy right there. Oh, yeah. And I'm doing it loosely and quickly, and that's because this highlight right here is so cool. And it's yep. going to look really strange here initially. And that's why it's so important we get to layering all those colored pencils. So it looks like uh, maybe my takeaway, and remember, I've never used this process uh, myself. It looks like you're going lighter and brighter to begin with. And then you're going to be working over the top with the colors that are going to bring the values in line and, and become more dull. Well, the markers are kind it? of blocky. They're kind of blocky. Uh, It's kind of a medium that suits itself better for blocky application. Okay. So, um, do you know what I mean by <laughs> blocky? <laughs> you know, like you're blocking in a painting. Well, yeah. I'm, like, I mean, as a as a painter, I'm just thinking you're just looking for shapes right now. Right. Is that the way you think about it? Yeah, just so graphic flat shapes. Okay. Right. And so in that way, you'll be going from simple to complex. And the colored pencils form. will smooth out the transitions between these sections. Okay. And intensify the colors and make them more solid. And you don't want to get too dark too quick. You can backtrack on that a little bit with the colored pencils, but you can't make an area completely white once you've, you know, covered it with markers, mm -hmm. which there aren't any really areas in here that are completely white. Uh, so I kind of have the freedom to That's true. be a little bit more liberal with the marker application. So I'm going to just go ahead and fill in this whole shape here and just work out over filling in this whole shape with what color is this dark brown okay Real we've got a, a marker here. question and also a comment that kind of goes along with it um bod gel asks would any alcohol-based markers with a range of colors work or would you recommend any brands and i don't know about matt but brent does art who's with us in the chat does appear to be recommending prismacolor over the copic 
but uh, mentions that he doesn't use markers all that often, though. So, um, you know, it's still an endorsement from someone who's used both. Matt, do you have a preference? Um, well, I'm using the Prismacolor markers here, that's, but... That seems like an endorsement. <laughs> that's, not well, that's not necessarily a, an endorsement. One of the, the thing I like about the Prismacolor markers is because I use Prismacolor pencils more than any other brand of colored pencils... Um, the colors match up, like the names of the colors. So, Oh, I see. Right. So it's familiarity. Yes. Um, but the Copic markers have brush tips, which I think I would actually prefer. That's true. Uh, with the, with uh, these Prismacolors, you got the fine tip that I'm using here, which isn't really that fun. Um, and then you've got the broad tip, which is kind of a chisel tip, you know, mm -hmm. um, which, is, which is fine, but... Let's put, bring a little bit of this. Sketch Shiniver says that the markers look kind of like an underpainting. That's what I was thinking, too. Yeah, they're kind of like an how underpainting. I think about it. Yeah. yeah. Very good. And we're getting this underpainting in. And Jazz mentions that Prismacolor markers are so expensive. You're right, they are. And the Copics are, are I think, about equally as yeah, expensive. Yeah, the Copics are, are just as expensive. Yeah. In fact, maybe more expensive. Um, but they are a little bit of a unique tool in in uh, in art world and marker world. These these uh, newer markers that have been coming out in the last, I guess, a couple of decades, decade and a half or so. I don't know. But I will tell you. I mean, you're not you're not going to have to go out and buy a bunch of markers. You know, they're, they're going to last you a while. So there's that. <laughs> it's not like uh, if you had markers. And you used markers growing up, and, you know, they would always like, dry like out. Like your Crayola markers like that. that last for an hour. Yeah, that, yeah, that's not the case with these. Now, I'm probably, I think I've mentioned this on one of the shows before. I probably told you, Matt. Um, I get donations of old art supplies sometimes at our school. And uh, some of those we use, and some really aren't suitable for large classroom applications. And I got this brand-new set of the old Mr. Sketch markers which are the ones that smell like chocolate or strawberries or blueberries. Oh, no. Who gave you that? Yeah, I know. And I hadn't seen them since I was a kid. And um, I, I guess they probably still make them. I don't know how old the set is, but the graphics on the package all look like it was from the 1970s. Hmm. So I thought, man, I have these ancient markers from my childhood. And I opened them up and they look brand new, like no scratch marks. Oh, on I them. just hold on to yeah. those. So, so I took a, t a cap off and smelled the blueberry marker and it was perfect. And it transported me all the way back to like, the third grade. So I put the cap back on and I keep them in a safe place. And just every once in a while, I take a marker out and I smell it. I know that seems strange, <laughs> but that's what they're made for. They're markers with scent. And I close my yeah, eyes for and adults. travel back not to my adults. childhood. It's so great. It's like having a little time machine and I'll never use them. And maybe the smell will last forever. <laughs> All right, now I'm breaking out. That last color, I think, was yellow ochre. It's goldenrod, I'm sorry. Goldenrod. Uh, this rod. color is dark umber. Okay. So we're going to go pretty dark with this here. Let's okay, Brent Does Art says that Prismacolors does have the brush tips now, so it looks oh, like okay. you're going to have to check those out. Again, you I have no idea what's going on in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't use Sharpie markers, that's, for, that's, that's the truth. All right, so we got some really dark values here, but... Jazz W says weirdo. I think he's talking about me and smelling the markers. I acknowledge that is a little weird. I, I concur with the, the strange... I could be weirder, weirdness. but I'm going to stop there. That's where I draw the line at weird, I think. You mean that's where you draw the line at telling us? That's where, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, let's go back to that brown we were using before, and we've got 27 minutes. The dark brown here. That's a pretty cool looking image you have there, just with the underpainting. You know, the cool green near the near the strawberry, and you've got those hot greens and yellow greens up there, and you got yeah. a nice complementary relationship yeah. happening. You know, well, I know I know you're going to go for more, you know, the natural colors and texture, but still kind of cool looking even now. <laughs> Norlene says sniffing markers, gateway to drugs. I don't know if it's if sniffing mark. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. We'll see how things go. I'll get back to you on that. 
I, I well, sniffing markers when they're meant to be smelled, I guess, is different. Yeah, they're called. You know, they 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 are they're, they're meant to be smelled. They actually have sense. And I think they did. They stop doing that. It's because different than smelling those. And I know what you're talking about, Norlene, because I have um, some of those markers from the 70s and 60s that are that were like the case was metal and they had like white and silver rings all the way around them. And if you open one of those up in a in an indoor space, the in, it is the fumes in, entirely fill the space almost instantly. So I know what you're talking about. Those old markers that are, I don't think may. Those were a type of alcohol-based marker, too, but they're different than what we're using nowadays. They were dangerous. All right. This, the chocolate down here is pretty dark, so we're going to bring this. Shelly says, you're doing great, Matt. Just breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> In fact, if I breathe too much, I'm going to smell these markers, which they don't smell that, but you can still smell them. GP says that uh, this, this technique of using markers over the colored pencils um, of things like fruits and candies and such um, r reminds them of the American hyper-realists. Yeah, this is actually an illustration technique. Yeah, um, that makes total sense. It's a good comment. Yeah. I need at least 20, 20 minutes for the colored pencils, at least. Oh, Jennifer says those scented markers give her migraines. Her daughter has some. Well, I hate that. I hate that for you because I, I love the smell of blueberry. Them. Yeah, I guess, they, I guess they still make them. I guess I don't have to save my set like well, it's some kind of— Well, you know, you could of, just get some blueberries and smell them. No, know, no, yeah. this is different. It's so artificial. It's kind of like the flavor grape. You know, grape chewing gum doesn't taste like grapes. Well, you know, when I think of blueberries, this is going to sound— yeah, you think sniffing markers is weird. <laughs> Whenever I think or hear about blueberries, mm -hmm. I think of that character from Strawberry Shortcake, the the blueberry guy. Wasn't there a blueberry guy? I don't that smelled like blueberries. I don't. I bet. I'll bet so. But I didn't. I, think I didn't watch was. Strawberry Shortcake, so well, I can't I didn't help watch, you there. Well, I guess I did watch it, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a sister, but I had a neighbor who was a girl in the eighties mm -hmm. and. She was really into strawberry shortcake. Okay. And I go play at her house, and I think she had a bunch of the strawberry shortcake characters. And I remember there being one that smelled like blueberries, and I think it was a guy. Yeah. That smelled like blueberries, like the character was a guy. And um, I don't know. I'm sure one of the experts out there in YouTube land will. Oh, I'll bet will so. Tell me. I'm, I'm. I think sure of uh, what was the what was the Willy Wonka oh, character with the turned into a blueberry? Which one was that? The Willy Wonka one, child. Veruca Salt was the one that went into the egg. Okay. Went, well, um, that's, I always think of that so movie the, in, the, in, the, in the person turning blue. Yeah. Now, um, Granny has an excellent comment. Looks like paint by number art. You are so right, Granny, because paint by numbers is how a lot of artists think to begin their art. They think in, in terms of shapes, which are a little bit flat. And then work those shapes into form. So in my estimation, you know, I think paint by numbers is is a great way to think. We just need to make up our own shapes and make up our own numbers. And that's yeah. what Matt's doing here. Yeah, paint by numbers is, is basically a structured approach to painting, which yep. a lot of painters like to take a structured approach where I, they'll I mix that. they'll mix colors before they start painting and they'll have an idea of where they're gonna place all the colors and then they place the colors and then blend. And that works great. In fact, that's probably yeah. that's probably how most opaque painters mm -hmm. That's how I think. Approach painting. Yep, that's how I think about starting an artwork. So um, Felicia tells us that uh, the character was called Blueberry Muffin. Oh, okay. Well, that's creative. Violet. It was Violet that turned into a blueberry, of course. It was Violet, yeah. i got to forget that. Her name was a color. I'm embarrassed that I forgot now. You're turning Violet, Violet. <laughs> You're turning Blue Violet. Oh, that's right. But Golly! not Blue Violet. I am just... Getting... I can't get just anything keep right. Drawing. I have... Just keep drawing. <laughs> Don't think of words. I'm going to put some little, <laughs> little, little chocolate chips in here. Not really looking at the reference for this. Just All right. Hmm. A little bit more yellow over here. More of a yellow or a little different brown. 
This is the golden rod, by the way, over the top of that. The golden rod. I like that name. The golden staff. Golden arrow. And then this side is a little bit more in shadow. So we'll go ahead and go over that. And Just heating it up a little bit. A little indication of some texture here. Mm -hmm. We've reached uh, just just around the halfway point, or about just there, just thereafter. All right. And it's uh, it's looking like a chocolate muffin with a strawberry on top. Well, almost. Okay, now we're ready for colored pencil applications, and let's start up here at the top and work our way down. So I'm going to start here with lime peel, which is perhaps my favorite green in the colored pencil lineup by Prismacolor. I use lime peel all the time. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's make this a little bit darker with some dark green. That's actually the name of the color. <laughs> and uh, the, the colored pencils here are going to help us refine things a little bit. And you can get super detailed with this if you want uh, because of the time constraint i've got all those little seeds and things in the strawberry i'm not going to get too carried away here all right um i learned so much on this show from uh from the chat box jazz w says that goldenrod is an awful weed that people always uh that our people are allergic to or can be allergic to so how about that next well, time i sneeze maybe it's goldenrod Let's see. Norlene says, can't wait until the colored pencil part. We're there. We're there. We're on it. But they're, they're, they're a couple minutes behind us or right. a couple That's seconds right. behind us. So. All right. And we'll let that get dark here. A few little indications of some streaks there. All right. Now... We take a little bit of indigo blue, and we're going to make another value in here, just slightly darker still. In the darkest areas. All right, let's go into this strawberry, shall we? Let's start with a little bit of crimson red here and I'm gonna pull out a few more of these little a few more dimples in there little crevasses that are happening mm -hmm. here where our seeds are gonna be and the, the, they kind of just become a little bit in, you know insinuated as we go across so we're not gonna and all of these we won't put seeds in A light application here of the crimson red over this pinky area while still keeping it kind of pinky. Again, very quick. I would normally work very slowly and deliberately here, but. Alika, I see your comment about, um, sorry if, if we've already addressed this, that you were in a meeting for the first part of the show, but I don't see your original comment. It may have already scrolled off the screen. So if you ask again and put it in caps, I'll try to read it. Brent Dozart says he's surprised how well the pencil lays down on that marker paper. Yeah, it works really great. I mean, there is some limitations to how far you can take. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow ochre here and go back across this direction kind of play up the transition from that yellow orange over to that pinky color and then let's take a little bit of cool gray this is 10 percent cool gray alana i see yeah. your current comment in capital letters about me not seeing your comments, <laughs> so maybe I missed them, but keep those capital letters coming. Sorry about that. Norlene says, this is the fastest I've seen Matt color. 
He doesn't have time to mess around tonight. I, this I don't, is a, this I don't have sketchy. time to, to work at my normal pace. I yeah. have to work very quickly in order to pull this off <laughs> or attempt to pull it off um, just because of the, the materials that I'm using here and the, the subject matter are kind of a, a double whammy here. But, uh, you know, these, the strawberry here has raised sections right next to the dimpled section. Mm -hmm. So it's real easy that in, to, to comprehend this. Any, any area that's raised is going to be lighter in value, and any area that's recessed is going to be uh, darker in value. And I'm, I'm kind of loosely going back and forth between the reference photo, so it's not going to look exactly the same. This, is, this may look like white, but it's actually 10%. Cool gray. Then we can go in with the white if we want and make a few of these a little bit stronger. Video H asks, is strawberry the number one fruit? I don't know. I think it's the number one fruit that artists like to draw because of those very things that Matt mentioned. Those raised and low sections gives you all these cool little wiggly highlights that run around those seeds. So I don't know if it's the number one fruit, but I think it is for drawing. I see some great illustrations of strawberries every year. Okay, let's go now to a little bit of Tuscan Reed. Now, Bajel does um, have an art-related question. Could you use a Bristol board for this type of a drawing? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's nice and smooth, too. It takes markers really well. So I know some of you are wondering, how is he going to do the seeds? <laughs> and the answer is uh, gouache. The magic apply, of gouache. Apply right. a little bit of gouache. Of course, over the top. gouache. Um, it used to be called designer's gouache a long time ago. People would pair those two words together. It was sort of an illustrator's medium, and Matt's trained as an illustrator, so he thinks about the gouache and going to it before probably <laughs> acrylic paint. You know, I don't know gouache well, no, photographs no. so much better than acrylic. Is that why you prefer gouache? I don't necessarily prefer gouache. Oh, okay. Um, just gouache goes over the top of colored pencils really easily. It really does. And acrylics probably would have no problem doing the same thing. But I see people use acrylic for tiny highlights sometimes, and um, I, I, I also prefer the gouache because it doesn't have a shininess to it. It's not plastic like the acrylic, and sometimes it matches other surfaces a little bit better. Okay, I need to move on from strawberry now. We'll come back to that. Let's move on. Let's go with this, uh, let's see, let's do dark brown Norlene next. says, this would have been a great live lesson. Well, Norlene, what I'm actually going to do, or what I'm thinking about doing, I don't want to commit fully, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what the little drawings that I make for getting sketchy here and actually turn them into finished paintings and make those finished paintings be a little mini course for the members um, so I think that would be cool to see this as a finished painting. I I definitely want to to paint this subject. I think it would be um, great for everybody to see the difference between um, a sketch of a subject and then spending you know a few hours on it instead of less than an hour and really see the difference between yeah. those uh, you know this just what you can do in, in a little bit with a little more patience and dedication. Okay, this is the dark brown. I'm going pretty quickly here, as you can see. Um, but I'm covering over some of this highlighted area. While you're working with the colored pencils, there were a few questions about pencil application or, 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 uh, or layering. Okay. One is, can you use marker over pencil crayon? Um, you can, but the wax, if you're using a, a colored pencil like I am here, this is a wax-based colored pencil. The mm -hmm. wax, I'm not sure how the wax will interact with yeah, the alcohol, actually. I'm not but sure. I, um, I would test that out. I would imagine that it would resist the colored pencil applications to a certain degree, Yeah. even though it's alcohol, but that's speculation. I, I typically use um, the markers as an underlayment and then the colored pencils over the top. Okay, and uh, thank you for that. Sketch Shinover asks, how many layers of colored pencil can you put on that marker paper since it is kind of smooth? Well, I get asked that a lot about how many layers and how many layers you can put on a surface all depends on the brand of the colored pencil you're using and also the amount of pressure that okay, you're placing so on the pencil. Okay, so it's not just the paper then. The, the softness of the pencil makes no, a difference too. No, there's lots of 
um, lots of different, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's lots of different variables at play here. Mm -hmm. So the colored pencils right now have, are producing a texture on the surface, but once we get a little bit more of the colored pencil material on the surface, you'll notice that texture less and less. So I don't know if you can notice that, especially when I'm going over the lighter areas. Yeah, we can see it right now. It's picking yeah. up, a little, appears to be a little That tooth. will all look a little bit smoother as I get more colors on the surface and more colored pencil applications. 3698s asks, are these markers considered permanent and light fast? I believe they are. I don't know, um, but I will tell you, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be doing work with colored pencils that you, you know, want to stand the test of time in a museum somewhere. Um, I, I'm not sure if they'll last forever, but they are markers at the end of the day. So yeah. that's just something to think about. We'll see. Are there... Are, do they have pigment in them? Are they advertised as pigment markers? Kind of like Micron has their Pigma brand of, of pens. Yeah, but even with the Micron pens, I mean, doesn't all material have some pigment in it? No, I mean, there's a difference between dye and, and pigment. Oh, I guess you're right. You know, that's I what guess we're really right, talking yeah. about there. It's dye. Is this ink dye or pigment? I'm not really sure. Because our clothes are dyed. That's why they fade, all right? But pigment remains the same and unchanged pretty much forever. It's Sometimes it's kind of elemental. All right. Um, ba Gel asks, what is gouache? He probably didn't say it like that. That's me. What is gouache? Well, that's a great question. Gouache is another, um, t another, I guess, synonymous term with gouache is opaque watercolor. I'm not a big fan of that because it sounds, it sounds like an oxymoron, but it's sort of true. Gouache uses gum arabic as its binder you know the thing that makes it kind of like uh liquid and makes it stick to stuff it's binder pretty much a fancy not even a fancy word but a word for glue and um and so they have the same binder uh gum arabic but gouache is opaque you know it's got some i guess it's got some fillers in there that uh that um allow it to cover itself which is always nice also um, something I like about gouache, like watercolor, is it can dry on your palette, and you can reanimate it, just you know, rewet it, and it'll turn back into paint. And of course, you got to be careful if you use too much water; it will lose its um, its opaque nature. You know, just like acrylic paint, it's an opaque paint, but if you add too much medium or water to it, it does start to become translucent. So you can think about it like opaque watercolor. But that also makes it. Uh versatile too so you can use it like watercolor that's true too. you can almost make it kind of milky if you want to and almost use like a glaze over another color but i mean you can't really you can't work one one layer into another or over another very much let me say it again you can't work on a layer over another um very very much or for very long or it will work into the under layer it'll actually re-wet any uh, color that you're trying to cover up so that is one one thing you got to be a little careful of all right, this is the 10% cool gray here, and I'm adding some highlights in some areas. And we're going to go over this whole area with this 10% cool gray, too, and kind of smooth out the transition on the Simon, I see your I see your comment about missing your question, and I believe your question has already scrolled off my screen. So if you would type it again and, uh, and use capital letters, I'll be sure to see it and I'll read it, I promise. It's a lot, a lot of comments and a lot of the lowercase letters, I don't, I don't always look at those or see those. Yeah, if you put your comments and questions in all capital letters, that will help Ashley see it a little bit easier. The chat box here on YouTube does tend to scroll by sometimes really quickly, so... And that way you can you guys can talk to each other in low in lowercase letters and I'll know that you're probably talking to one another. Okay, so as I'm getting some of this 10% uh, cool gray in place, you can see that some of the transitions that seemed pretty harsh are now smoothing out. And if we were to do all of this drawing in colored pencils without the benefit of the uh, marker underlayment, this would take a really long time. All right, everybody's blaming my 2017 glasses for not seeing comments, and uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's it. 
This is the dark side of YouTube. Coming yeah, I'm just you. I'm reading I'm reading the past. I'm stuck yeah. in the past. All right, let's go down here. I can't wait to make some of these darks darker. Just going to really make things stand out a lot more. Sandra says this is looking really good. And also, Matt, how is your back? Um, my back is about ninety five percent better. Thank you for asking. I, I spent a couple days where it was really hard to walk. And I really messed up my back, but I kept, you know, trying to exercise it a little bit and I uh, didn't try to get too stiff with things or stop doing what I was doing completely. And mm -hmm. I think that really helped a lot, helped me heal a little bit quicker. So I, I've been down with my back before for a, for a longer period of time, or my back's at least bothered me for a longer period of time. So I'm grateful that this one was kind of short lived. What what a difference fifteen minute makes. You know, that's from the time that you stopped working on with the markers and switched over to the colored pencils. I don't remember who it was, but somebody did mention how flat it had looked before. And that's yeah. true because you were working mm -hmm. with shapes and shapes are, are two D, so it's a good observation. And uh but you know, just working those shapes together using your colored pencils really contributed to the form. All right, let's go darker now. And I'm gonna actually switch over to indigo blue. And that's going to sound really strange, but the blue and the brown are going to mix, mm -hmm. and it's going to make a really dark value that's almost black. And it's also going to add a little bit of um, richness to the color for, you know, I can't think of a better way to describe it, <laughs> but it's adding <laughs> a little bit of color to the shadow and uh, a little bit of, of the hue in there actually helps make it pop a little bit so Brent does art says not to feel too bad about my glasses that his are so old they're back in style that's a great idea I'll just hang on to these until I'm hip again sketch Shinover says Matt you're making me hungry with this drawing it is oh. it is looking pretty delicious now Okay. And I'm not a big, Thanks. I'm not usually a big fan of chocolate. I usually, I go for the the coconut and the vanillas uh, desserts out there, but this does look really good. Who doesn't like chocolate? Well, I guess, I guess you don't like chocolate, but I can't imagine that. I'm a big chocolate fan. I guess it's what you get used to. I don't think mom, I'm not sure. I have a theory that my mom wouldn't let me eat chocolate when I was a kid, and that's why I didn't really develop a taste for it. You were like Willy Wonka? Mm-hmm, I guess. Wouldn't Willy Wonka's, didn't Willy Wonka, this is some But then he dedicated his umber. life to chocolate, right? Yeah, well, yeah. And wonderful candy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> This is some dark un umber over the top of this, mm -hmm. uh, some of these indigo blue applications. And I'm just going to switch back and forth between indigo blue and, and the dark umber here. Dorothy asks about the paper. Does it make a difference if I use sketchbook paper, uh, like a paper that has a little bit of a tooth to it? What, I, I'm just guessing because I've, I've never actually used this process, these media to get this media together. But Matt did mention this paper um, not bleeding much around the edges of his shapes. And with sketchbook paper, you may find your shapes and marker look a little bit soft around the edge where the ink follows the fibers just a little bit. Yeah, it does make a difference. Um, if I was working on sketchbook paper, um, I would not be able to, to replicate the same results with the same speed that I'm achieving here um, because the texture of the paper would cause a little bit more tooth to be evident with the colored pencil applications. You'd actually have to... If you wanted to eradicate the tooth and make it look smooth, you'd actually have to apply quite a bit more of the colored pencil to the surface, which that's fine if that's what you want to do. But um, you would definitely need to layer a little bit more because this paper mm -hmm. is so smooth. And since we've got the markers underneath, there's not really a great need to continue to layer colors, if that makes sense. We can kind of get away with the marker underlayment and then the colored pencil applications over the top. And it's becoming clear that I'm going to need a little bit more time for this, but not as much as I thought. I think I'll be able to maybe work five more extra minutes and get this one. Yeah, let's do that. Finished. We've so. got your finishing touches with the gouache coming yeah, up. Yeah, I got the gouache. I got the cast shadow still. I think, I mean, still I think to. this was, it's kind of a, kind of a marathon subject. 
Well, so I think you've done great it's so not far for about subject. 43 it's, minutes. It's the medium. Uh, these yeah, mediums, I mean, it's I'm... Media choice. You have a variety of different colors. You have a, a process that requires different layers to be in place for it to work. So all that takes a little bit of time, obviously. And I'm hurrying through it, but you still get the, still get the idea of how these... Sketch Jennifer says uh, that uh, they can't eat sweets anymore, but do love sweets. I'm right there with you. I've, I've cut out almost all things that taste sweet from my diet as well for health things, not uh, and not because I wanted to. You know, I actually you know, feel better and have less inflammation. So and nobody wants to hear about that. But uh, in any case, um, I'm I'm feeling a little tortured right now myself too. Deb says it was Willy Wonka's dad. He was a dentist. That's why. Yeah, that's right. Thanks for bringing us. Thanks for thanks for uh, for jogging our memories. It's been a while since I saw that excellent movie, and I'm talking about the I'm talking about the one with um, Gene Wilder. Gene well, Wilder. the original, the one with Gene Wilder didn't have Willy Wonka's. Yeah, dad. That, that's, in it, that was but. a remake. Uh, no, that, that was, was that, the that was the original. That was the original, but it didn't have Willy Wonka's dad in it. Okay. The the, um, the remake they made recently with. Uh, What's his name? Uh, is it Johnny Depp? Johnny Depp. That yeah, name? that's that one had Willy Wonka's. Yeah. Okay. Dad in it. I haven't actually seen that one. Okay, a little bit of burnt ochre now. We're gonna bring into the mix. Yeah. Um, we'll one Southpaw two mentions that you really captured the glossy part of the chocolate icing, and I concur. I think that looks really great. That oh, transition thanks. down from the strawberry into that highlight. I'm just quickly putting a little bit of texture here, and let's add a little bit. A variation in these highlights here with this. The time, um, let's see, Hoot and Holler reminds us that the timer is just a suggestion. That's right. It is. It's just you, a suggestion. You, you got it right. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for reminding us and everybody else. That timer is a guide. But actually, <laughs> it makes I, it fun. Believe it or not, I'm, I'm almost to a point where I could call this finished. Um, I, I do have to add the seeds. Got to add the seeds in and there. And those are really easy. So I know that seems like that's it's going to be hard, but I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and just bring back a little bit of this highlight here. You see, it brings out some of the color from that indigo blue, which is really nice. Eight uh, video H says this is coming out good. Gouache out. Got a pro over here. <laughs> <laughs> And Brent does art. Yeah, he's is so, gonna, fun. he's, he's so gonna, funny. I know these are. It's a great. It's a great night in the chat. Brent does art. Says I've decided I'm stealing this one from art class. Yeah, this would be a great tutorial to lead your class through. Yeah, but make sure that they understand that the time spent on this is not. <laughs> imagine spending four times as much. Right. On this what drawing. if you What if you slowed down? What would happen then? That's the big thing with students. They just want to. Well, they're, they're going to want to do their drawing and be done in 45 minutes anyway, so this is perfect. <laughs> How far can they get in 45 minutes or whatever attention span they're bringing at the moment, you know, to the table? Okay, I'm just kind of softening up some of the texture up here with the 10% cool gray. And let's put the shadow down first, and then we'll add the seeds. And look, that thing's beeping again, but it's not. Uh, that noise i guess went off right when the timer was up but uh, accidentally timed week. it just right all right i see a question from simon it says i don't know anything about pen and pencils other than using it to draw stuff i think that's good uh, where can i get a starter pack i use pencils like weapons in video games i don't know anything about weapons i just use them well um you use them to draw stuff that is true and that's that's really all we use pens and pencils for here i have too heard that the pen is mightier than the sword but i haven't given it a shot yet so maybe i'll try to um, use a pen or a pencil as a weapon in a video game where can you get a starter pack oh gosh i tell you what just starter about pack of, of, of pens and pencils just about any art store well, what types of pens and pencils? This is 10% uh, warm gray, by the way. Well, if it's a starter pack, I'm guessing you're thinking about a variety. So I would tell you, I would suggest if you're interested in a set of pencils, I wouldn't buy a set. Actually, I would buy individual pencils. And I would, you know, pencils are designated in terms of their softness, and they go in order from about 9H 
down 8H, 7H, and so on, down to what's called HB, which is our center pencil. It's kind of like a number two pencil. And then the, um, the numbers continue into the softer direction as B and then 2B and 3B and so on. So I would buy a few Bs and a few Hs and skip pencils in between. So maybe like a 6B and a 4B and a B and then maybe a 2H and that's probably it. Let me let me say something real quick here. Do um, you see that shadow I just put in? It's not exactly yeah. the same shape, but it's pretty close. Um, this is with 10% cool gray. You're not going to be able to do that with okay. with uh, Sharpie markers. You're not going to be able to do that with with water-based markers. Right. So that's where you, if you're not using, if you're using different types of markers, you might want to uh, might want to use maybe just colored pencils for that shadow. And this is 70% warm gray. Or get get some alcohol-based markers. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just going to bring this out a little bit. All right, Alana, I see, I see your comment. I tried to do this with watercolor brush pens. Did not work mostly from a lack of colors. Mm. Um, I think with more colors, it would be a substitute for markers. Okay, so it didn't work just due to the colors, not due to the the, app, the application itself. That's a great tip. Watercolor brush pens. Okay, you can see I can go back over the top of that 70% warm gray that I applied and create somewhat of a transition. Okay. But it's not perfect, so then I can go back with this colored pencil and ease the transition there. This is 10% cool gray. April says, thanks for the shadow. I think everybody was waiting for the shadow. They were on the edge of their seats, ed edge of their <laughs> seats for that shadow. All right, then I'm going to take a colorless blender. I love drop shadows too. And work this in. Create a little bit more of a transition. Now I could keep working on that transition. Mm -hmm. um, let's bring up a little bit more of the 10%. Work on that just a little bit. Eh, it's not changing things too much. We'll let it sit there. Now I'm going to grab the gouache and we'll add the seeds. Um, this is the gouache I'm using. Uh, Windsor Newton makes it. It's designer's gouache. And I'm going to take a little bit of white, and I'm actually going to put this on the paper just a little bit out of camera, and a little bit of the yellow ochre here. Okay. Just a little dab. There we go. And again, you can't see this. It's out of camera. And then I'm going to wipe it off of my hands so I don't get it on the art. And I'm going to use a very fine tip brush here. Grab a little bit of the white and the yellow ochre. Now, we do have a comment from Stephanie, and it's something that Matt and I talked a little bit about actually right before the show. We were looking at the highlight on that cupcake and talking about its color. Stephanie mentions that she sees more blue in that highlight. And, uh, you know, it was a conscious, conscious decision Matt made to use the green underneath as opposed to blue. Did you want to say anything about that? Well, the, the green I used is called jade green. Yeah, it is cool. But it's definitely a blue green. It's, mm. it's not... It's not a green like I used up here, uh, obviously. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I could have used a different blue, but from the markers that I have, that jade green is actually a better match than any of the other blues that I had. So um, I would encourage you when you're working on your own art not necessarily to think in terms of names of colors, but colors that are the closest match to what you see. Um, hopefully that you know, that's good sense. advice because I use a limited palette when I paint. I don't, I don't like to have 20 different colors squeezed out into my palette. I like to have usually no more than about five. And that causes, um, you know, causes me to have some limitations in terms of the colors that I'm actually able to mix. So, um, I use the colors I like, the colors I'm, I'm familiar with, the ones I feel skilled at, at mixing. And, uh, and, and I shoot for as close as I can get to the colors that I see, with the palette that I've chosen. One thing about the limited palette is it does introduce a little bit of harmony into your artwork by default um, because all of your, your mixtures are gonna have a, they're gonna, sh 
they're more likely to have a shared color between them all. And so there are, there are benefits to using limited palettes, even if you can't necessarily reproduce the colors exactly the way we see them with our eyes. Great comment, though, and good eyes yourself. Well, yeah, and I was just talking more about the, 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 the actual colors that I have at my disposal, which, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, you're never going to have it. Seldomly will you have an exact match. Um, so you have to have a color that's going to, going to read in a similar way. Mm -hmm. And really, you could use any color you want as long as the value's right. Okay, a little bit with the colorless blender here, and then I'm going to make this bottom edge. Okay, I'm, I'm still bit darker. Um, I'm seeing some comments that are not in caps, but they are art related, and so I'm going to go ahead and read one of them. Um, Norlene asks, "Is this acrylic paint?" Now, this is markers and uh, colored pencils. Okay. And gouache. And, and a touch of gouache. Yeah, I think, okay, she was asking about I think about she was the, asking about what you were painting paint. with. Okay, so yeah, it's, gotcha. it's gouache. You can use acrylic. Um, gouache is uh, just a little bit different. It's uh, opaque watercolor. You can actually scratch it off. I mean, if you don't like it, you can kind of scratch it off and try it again. Um, let's see. Sandra says, if people are interested in this media, tell them about the frog. That's fantastic also. Is that one of your, uh, is that yeah, one of your courses? Yeah, the frog's one of the live lesson series. Okay. There's also one where we draw some blood oranges with this combination of media. Oh, yeah, media. I remember those. Those did There's look great. There's a free lesson where I draw a Snickers bar with this combination of media. There's also another free lesson where I draw a sports car mm -hmm. with this combination of media. There's some cherries over there. Did you mention the shark? Did the you, shark. Did you do a shark with colored pencil over marker, or was that all marker? That was uh, markers, graphite, pen and ink. Oh, my gosh. Black and white ink. I, charcoal. Oh, next I week, use like next every week on getting could, sketchy. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I could never use all those media in 45 minutes. Uh, all right. Um, you know, I can continue on with this and just keep going and keep going and keep going, but um, I'm going to have to stop here. Let me just add a little bit to the top of this leaf. Now, Shea asks if I've um, ever used a Zorn palette. I know what you're talking about. And uh, Zorn, boy, heck of a painter right there, isn't he? So those are some uh, pretty fantastic portraits. So I'm glad to see your comment. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's exactly a Zorn palette. I have, I have painted with just yellow ochre, um, Indian red, black, and white. So I'm not sure how close that is. But I have used just those four pigments before. It's pretty, pretty great for old world style portraiture. All right. Um, I only brought out a limited number of colored pencils, but I would like to ease that transition there. But I'm not going to get to do it because we have got to stop now because we got to go live on the we other do. channel. We do. We're going we're gonna to start another show um, in about 20 minutes. But just a little bit with the colorless blender here, down here in this textured part, mm -hmm. this, I, I'm, this 45 minutes was more than... It wasn't even close to being a suggestion. It was just, <laughs> I don't even know why it was up there. I told Matt that he uh, should invert the four and the five and give himself 54 minutes this week. Maybe nobody uh, would notice. Let's have a little bit more yellow up here. I mean, I could go... I, this, this combination of media really just gives you the ability to just continue to work and continue to work and continue to work if you want to. And the more that you, the more that you apply to the surface, just the more the drawing seems to come to life. Uh, but this was a little over 45 minutes, but pretty close. Definitely right, we under got an a hour. ton of comments, and they're already going off the screen. Um, Teresa says, do all the lessons in the past for marker and colored pencils use only alcohol-based markers? Yes. Okay. This uh, is because the that round. goes back to what we talked about at the beginning. Um, you're not going to be able to get the same results with, with water-based markers. You, you really need to use alcohol-based markers. All right. Thank you for that. Brent Does Art says, fun fact, strawberries are the only fruit on earth that the seeds grow on the outside. Brent, that's because they're brambles. They're not even berries. They're brambles. We've, we've been calling them by the wrong name all this time. Um, Bod Gell says, the comment about perspective that Ashley made earlier is really starting to fabricate. Thanks for noticing. I think so, too. And I think it worked out. I like that subtle change in the perspective of the cupcake. It makes sense since we can, since we can see so much at the top of the cupcake. Uh, let's see. I'm looking for 
Just quick questions here at the end. What about oil pastels over markers? Uh, yeah, you could try that. Yeah. I've, I've never done that, but I'm, I'm sure those mediums would play well, well together. Oil pastels are sticky. You can put them over anything. So Yeah. Um, and, and the thing um, about colored I'm pencils sorry. and the markers is they have a similar look on the surface. Uh, you know, the texture they produce is not that different from each other. So uh, anyway, what I was saying about this combination of media mm -hmm. is that it gives you a whole lot of control. So if you want to create images that look like paintings, but you're a little bit afraid of painting and you feel more comfortable with drawing, this is a good combination of media to get into that. Yeah. The alcohol-based markers are expensive. Um, but like I said, I, I've never had to replace one of these markers, and I've had this marker set for several years. Uh, granted, I don't use them every day, but they do last a pretty long time. So mm -hmm. your initial investment will stick with you for a while. Um, but anyway, with a, a little bit more time, um, you can develop drawings to a pretty high level with this combination of media. So yeah. do you have anything else? Any questions? Yeah. Um, let's see. There was a question from Video H. What other channel are you going live on? It's not a channel. We're going live at the virtualinstructor.com. Yeah, you do have to be a member to access that. Um, if you're interested in the membership program, there's a link in the description below. Uh, everybody starts out with a week-long trial for free. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can join us tonight. Actually. In fact, yeah, there's time to start your trial and be there um, in 20 minutes ready to go and see what the life lessons are all about. Yeah, but there's time now to start your trial. If if we don't get off of here, we, <laughs> if we don't we get off, we won't have time. We won't be alive over there. But uh, what I'm doing right now in that series is I'm doing a uh, portrait of my one of my daughters my and it's about daughter. uh i guess it's about 70 percent through so something like that yeah, pretty, pretty there. deep into this one yeah. dorothy asked this is the last question i see at the moment would you use this media combination for landscapers at best for still life and objects um i get questions a lot about whether a specific medium is better for certain subjects and um, I'm kind of hesitant to say yes or no because I feel like medium, it, the medium that you use is kind of irrelevant according to the subject that you choose. There are some mediums that might make the process a little bit easier, um, but I really feel like, I mean, you can do a pen and ink drawing that's a landscape, you can do a pen and ink drawing that's a portrait, or you can do a pen and ink drawing that's a still life. And I feel like that's true for any medium that you use. Yeah. You can definitely do a landscape with markers and colored pencils, and you could also do a landscape with a completely different medium and do so the do the same landscape with different media choices and see what you like better the look of and it might just kind of contribute to your style yeah you could but we, i think what i think a lot of questions we get here especially on getting sketchy are asking are people asking for permission to do things uh -huh. like is it okay to use this medium is it okay to combine these mediums together is it okay to use this surface and the answer most of the time is yes mm -hmm. yours might look different but that's okay so um, can you use this medium for landscape? Yes. Yes. Can you use this medium for still life? Yes. So there's not necessarily a specific medium that's designed for portraits, for example, or, or whatever. You can, you can do any type of subject matter with any medium or any combination of media that you want. All right. I, I think we've got to go. We've got to get out of here. Yeah, it's I'd already like, 744. I'd like to keep checking the chat, so let's go ahead and switch we're going to have to here. switch over. All right, guys, thanks for sticking around for the last hour plus. It's been over an hour. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just glad that I was able to finish this one, um, you know, it, outside of the 45 minutes, but still was able to finish it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you like it, of course. Share this video with other people that you think might love it. If you want to check out the membership program, there's a link in the description below. If you want to check out three course videos and eBooks for free, which actually put you on our newsletter list so you'll get emails with free lessons. Uh, there's a link to check that out as well in the link in the description below. There's a link in the description below. Guys, I hope you have a wonderful week. Uh, if you're joining us over at the live lessons, we'll see you in just a minute. Good night, everybody.